When a virus invades your body, your immune system immediately springs into action to fight off the enemy intruder. How does your body beat a virus? This is the University of the Netherlands. Your body is a battlefield. On the open plains of your skin, lungs, stomach, and genitals, invaders from opposing armies are constantly probing for weak points. Bacteria, viruses, and other disease-causing organisms poke and prod at these so-called barrier tissues, attempting to squeeze their way into the warm, nutrient-rich kingdom that is you. By the end of my talk, you'll understand how your body's defense systems protect the kingdom of your body against these microbial invaders. And you'll also get a sneak peek into my own research, which is all about training the cells of your immune system to target and destroy any of these invaders that squeeze in. Let's start at the very beginning in this story, when an invader finds a weak spot and the enemy army infiltrates. If you've ever had a viral infection, you might be able to guess what happens next. The invading virus or bacterium will start replicating, making more of itself, and your immune system will spring into action. Traditionally, immunologists describe the defenses of our bodies to be a two-armed system. On the one hand, you have the so-called innate immunity, and on the other hand, the adaptive immunity. Let's start with the innate immunity. I like to think of innate immunity as our own personal distant early warning lines. During the Cold War, after World War II, a system of radar stations in Canada's frigid far north was set up to give advance warning of any Soviet attacks. If incoming bombers were detected, this Arctic line of radar would provide sufficient notice to the more populated southern centers to identify the exact threat, prepare their defenses, and possibly mount a counterattack. Our innate immune system acts as a warning system that permits preparation for a defense to dangerous intruders. But our innate immune system is also more than that. In and of itself, it's a line of early nonspecific defense. Nonspecific defense, what does that mean? Well, it means that when the innate immune system notices an enemy soldier has infiltrated, it gets moving right away, no matter what the identity of that soldier is. Some innate immune cells, like macrophages, dendritic cells, and Langerhans cells, will jump into action by scurrying around your body and eating up any of the microbial soldiers that they can find, literally gobbling them up and gorging themselves on viruses or bacteria as they eat, these immune cells also have two other tasks. First, they send out signals to other immune cells that will call them to the site of the problem. These other cells will help mount an attack against the enemy and eventually promote healing of wounds at the location of this battle. And secondly, they digest their prey. And upon digesting the enemy, our innate immune cells pull a rather medieval trick. Ancient harbors would publicly gibbet or hang in chains the bodies of pirates and other criminals in an attempt to deter future misdeeds, just like in Pirates of the Caribbean. Likewise, innate immune cells like macrophages, dendritic cells, and Langerhans cells display the digested remains of the microbial army. Bits and pieces of the unlucky bacteria, virus, or other invader will be studded across innate immune cell surfaces as a warning to all ye who dare enter here. But for these clever cells, this gibbeting is more than just a simple warning. It's also a call to action for the second arm of the immune system, adaptive immunity. Although they're highly effective in their own way, the innate immune cells are only intended to be the first line of defense. After they've eaten a virus or bacterium, they move to the lymph nodes in the body to ask for backup. If you've ever felt your tonsils, which are simply lymph nodes in your neck, swell up as you start to notice the onset of a sore throat, it's because your immune cells are rushing in. It's like a scene from the Star Wars cantina on Moss Eisley. Soldiers, smugglers, and assassins come together at the lymph node to trade information. And at these lymph node cantinas, the gibbeted bodies of the microbes, now displayed on the innate immune cells, 
act as a sort of wanted poster that can be shown to assassins. And indeed, it's at the lymph nodes that your innate immune cells hire a more targeted team of assassins, the adaptive immune cells. These include T cells, which act as tanks and are sent out to directly blow up the enemy. And alongside these T cells, B cells are called to action. They produce antibodies, which can be used to create sticky traps that can entangle the enemy. Antibodies have a sort of Y shape, like this, and they use grabby hands on the end of the Y to grab onto microbes. Ideally, microbes will then end up entangled in a mass of sticky antibodies, so they can't move around easily anymore, which makes the microbe a slower and easier target for immune cells. So both the T cells and the B cells help with the current campaign against the enemy microbe, and they also retain a memory of the battle. The memory of the adaptive immune cells means that the next time the same enemy microbe tries to enter the kingdom of your body, a defense team will be lying in wait. The defensive forces now know exactly what that particular enemy looks like, which means they can mount their defense more quickly. To summarize so far, this system is incredibly elegant. By eating up the invaders as quickly as possible, innate immune cells not only take out some of the enemy army, but they also gather information on what the enemy looks like. They then pass this information on to the adaptive immune system by way of their gibbet-like display of digested enemy invaders. The information is slowly spread, and assassin adaptive immune cells are grown and trained, and then these adaptive immune cells set out just like Luke Skywalker to destroy the enemy Death Star, which, in this case, is a microbe. This also explains why it takes around a week for you to start feeling better when you encounter a new type of virus or bacterium. It simply takes a few days for the adaptive immune cell assassins to be hired, trained, and completely clear out the infiltrators. But luckily for us, as I mentioned before, the adaptive immune system also has a memory, which means that these assassins have a memory. So if they see signs of a second Death Star in the body, they already know exactly what to do. You might have noticed that the innate immune cell's gruesome armor of gibbeted enemy microbes plays a key role in linking the innate and adaptive arms of the immune system by acting as a wanted poster for the incoming invaders. So how does the system work? To understand this, we need to zoom into the cell. On the inside of our cells, there's a lot going on. You can think of each of our cells like an individual spaceship in the Star Wars universe, filled with droids that help keep the spaceship running. In the world of biology, these droids are proteins, the machines that keep our cells running smoothly. And some of these machines within our cells could be compared specifically to defense droids. They're constantly on the lookout, and as, and as soon as an invader enters the cell, defense droids will jump into action. As in the Star Wars universe, there are many different types of defense droids with different strengths and abilities. However, they all have a single goal in common, to defend the cell. My research focuses on one specific group of protein defense droids, the ones that carry out recycling within your cells. Because just like your apartment before you did your spring cleaning, when you realize how much stuff you have collected over the last year, cells can also accumulate too much stuff. I won't get into it in detail, but the excess stuff in cells can potentially be dangerous. It's hard for droids to move around in a cluttered spaceship. So our cells evolved a way to deal with this clutter. It's recycled. This cellular recycling is called autophagy. I know it's a difficult word, so I always tell people to break it down into two pieces. Auto, self, and phagy, eating. Literally self-eating by cells. So how does that happen? Well, cells begin by wrapping up material that's no longer needed in a structure that's made of fat, which looks sort of like two garbage bags layered inside one another, you know, to keep everything extra secure. This structure is called an autophagosome, and it holds the microbes that need to be recycled. Then the autophagosome can merge with another bag-like structure inside the cell that's sort of like a stomach. It carries acid that helps to break up stuff, 
So once this merge of bags happens, the microbe inside the autophagosome is broken down and the smaller pieces of it can be remade into new things in the same manner as what we humans do with our old plastic bags and cardboard boxes. So why am I telling you all of this? Well, because sometimes cells are able to use autophagy to recycle invading microbes. For example, some viruses can be recycled this way. And in fact, my doctoral supervisor, Carla Ibero, was the first person to discover that one specific type of human immune cell, the Langerhans cells, which are one type of innate immune cells, can actually degrade HIV this way. Of course, not all human cells can recycle HIV using autophagy. Otherwise, this virus wouldn't be such a massive problem for us humans. But the fact that some cells can accomplish this feat gave us the idea that maybe if we turned up the dial on autophagy, we could help more of our cells to send HIV to the garbage compactor. And that is exactly what I aim to do with my research. I want to dig into the details of how autophagy can either help or hinder viruses in their quest to infect us. And I'd like to end my talk today by telling you a story about how I set out to train human cells to destroy HIV using autophagy. Well, why HIV, you might ask? Well, although we often think of HIV as a pandemic of the past, it is still a major issue today. Every day, 5,000 people are newly infected. Plus, we lack a cure for it. It's a lifetime sentence, and existing treatments aren't always available or effective for all. So adding extra weapons to our anti-HIV armory is definitely socially and scientifically important. Now, because autophagy is key throughout the immune system, there are already a lot of drugs available that boost autophagy. For example, to treat non-infectious diseases like cancer and epilepsy. So we asked, can we repurpose these drugs to help more immune cells gain this unique ability to send HIV to the garbage compactor? To test this, we use human tissues that are left over after surgeries, like skin that's left over after tummy tucks, or pieces of post-operative gut. And by infecting these tissues with HIV and then treating the tissues with autophagy drugs, we can then analyze the antiviral abilities of the drugs, so see how well they work, and research exactly which cells of the human body are impacted. To make a long story short, we showed that, yes, autophagy-enhancing drugs could both prevent HIV from getting inside different types of human cells, and they could also put the brakes on ongoing HIV infections. So our research showed that there's potential for proactively casting off the incoming virus to stop infection, and also for destroying HIV after it's already inside your cells, which is a key goal for treatment of people living with HIV. So excitingly, those skin and gut models are now helping us to quickly find potential new antiviral therapies to other emerging and relevant viruses. Right now, we're investigating on how boosting or blocking autophagy can help protect us from the likes of SARS-CoV-2 and dengue virus. Circling back to our main question, how does your body beat a virus? Today, we zoomed into the immune system and learned how incredibly effective it is in protecting us from incoming invaders. We also learned one way that we can help our immune systems to protect our bodies even better, by training our immune cells to recycle viruses. Thank you for listening. Thank you.